What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some practical uses for the extension Fredo Scale, which is an amazing extension by Fredo 6 that adds scaling options into SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so first off, big thank you to my supporters on Patreon for voting on this extension. So one of the perks of supporting the show on Patreon, even if it's only a dollar a month, is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So this extension was selected by my supporters on Patreon. So if you do want to support the show, maybe vote on the extension that I cover. You can do that at the link in the notes down below. But what we want to do is we want to talk about some practical applications for the extension Fredo Scale. And so what I was going to do is I was going to go through and cover each one of these tools a little bit. But what I kept coming back to is there's a couple of the tools that I use more than the others. And so what I wanted to do is talk through some of the times that we might use that. So first off, um, using the box scaling tool. So the box scaling tool operates a lot like the SketchUp scale tool, right? So if I tap the S key, that's gonna activate scale like this, and I can scale my objects inside of SketchUp. And that's great, it's super easy, but what happens is sometimes things start getting a little more complicated when you get shapes that aren't necessarily aligned with like the bounding box of the shape. So for example, this, if you double click in here, aligns with the model axes like this. And um, SketchUp uses this bounding box and the model axes to set the directions you can scale. However, for this one, which is off a little bit, so notice how this is not aligned with the axes. If I was to select the scale option here and scale this, notice how it doesn't really follow along with the direction of the actual geometry in the shape. Um, so that's a little bit of a problem. And so one of the things that you can do though is if you use the box scaling function instead of the SketchUp scaling function, what that's gonna do is that's going to align your box that you can scale with with the geometry inside of that shape. So notice how right here I can come in here and I can actually scale this along this length um, using this tool where I can't do it with the other tool. So this is going to be an excellent tool for that. All right, so another great use for this tool is sometimes if you have a shape like this one that's not drawing a face inside of it, a lot of the time the reason for that is because you might have accidentally drawn a little shape that makes this slightly off axis, right? And the problem with that is that just makes this kind of a nightmare for trying to fill in a shape. Like you can draw this across here, but notice how you don't get a shape across here because you've got this little issue right here. And especially if you bring in like CAD files or something like that, it can be really difficult to get all of that level. So what I do though, is I like to use this tool in order to scale those so that you don't have these issues anymore. So what you can do is you can select this whole thing. And if you were using the SketchUp scale tool, notice that you can't scale to zero. Right? It doesn't allow you to scale something to zero. Well, the problem with that is what we want to do is we want to scale this on the Z axis to zero so that these lines are all on the same um, plane, right? So we want to level everything out. Well, with the Fredo Scale box scaling tool, you can set that value to zero. So if I click in here and type in zero, and hit the enter key. Notice what that did is that scaled everything up and down. So now everything is flat and on the same plane. Well, what that means is that means if I come in here and draw across this face now, like this, now I can get a face in here. So what you could do is you could take like a whole CAD file or something like that, and you could actually come in here and you could just flatten the whole thing. So you would just select all of the geometry and use box scaling in order to scale that to zero. So another thing that can be a little bit frustrating when you're trying to resize objects is that if you use the SketchUp scale tool, so if I scale this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna scale the entire model and it's gonna distort some things, right? So for example, if I scale this picnic table model, notice if I scale it in like this, my supports are getting distorted. Right, So if I scale it in, those are going to get thinner. If I scale it out, they're going to get wider. Well, sometimes you just want to be able to rescale something just a little bit in order to make it fit in a space. So let's say we wanted this table to have a length more like this, right? Well, Fredo Scale has a tool called Box Stretching. And what Box Stretching is going to do is that's going to allow you to stretch an object without getting distortion 
inside of your model. So notice how when I mouse over this object, it gives me this kind of like red box in here. And if you were to right click and click on show hide divider, um, you can turn that on if you don't see it, but you can set that up to be kind of a grid. But basically what this is telling us is if we were to use the vertical scale tool right here, it would scale this object based on this central point right here rather than scaling the object based on the ends. So what that means is that means I could scale this out to align with this piece right here. Well, notice how I didn't get any distortion along here because this is scaling based on the location of this grid right here. So you can use that to really quickly um, scale things about the center or about a set point um, without having any issues. So another example here is let's say I had a cabinet like this one. Um, what we could do is we could use box scaling or box stretching um, in order to base this on a central point. But in this case, right, we don't want this based on the center. What we want is we want this to be based on a point along the edge right here. Well, this is a double cabinet though, right? So if we were to box stretch this, one cabinet door would be wider, but not the other one. But what you can do is you can right click on this and there's an option in here for from center. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to set multiple points that you want to scale from, right? So if this is in the middle, it's just going to give you one. But if you drag this over, like this, you can actually use this to set a point in the middle of this side of the cabinet and a point in this, the middle of this side of the cabinet. So now, if I was to do this, notice how this is gonna scale about center, kind of like the scale tool does, but it's scaling based on both of these grid pieces inside of SketchUp. So this is a really easy way to stretch objects without deforming them inside of your models. All right, so sometimes you want to set an object to twist inside of SketchUp, right? So let's say, for example, that we wanted this box to twist so that it had kind of a turn um, moving along the side of the box. So if we were to try to do this with the rotate tool, notice what you get is you get this kind of like nasty geometry in here. And the reason for that is SketchUp is deforming your geometry so that you still have edges that run between this point and this point, this point and this point this point and this point. But the problem with that is you can't really use that to get like a good twist on anything, right? It's just gonna give you kind of ugly geometry and it's not gonna work super well. However, there's a tool in here called box twisting. And what box twisting is going to do is that's gonna allow you to take an object and twist it. And it's basically going to um, slice your object so that you get a uniform twist. So let's say for example that I wanted to twist this 35 degrees. What I would do is I would click on this point right here move my mouse and click here, and then I would type in a value of 35, like this. Well, what that does is that comes in here and that actually slices your model up into different slices. So if you turn on hidden geometry, you can kind of see what it did. It basically sliced this up along here so that you get this kind of like uniform twist. And so one thing to note about that is you can set the slicing parameters so that you have more slices. And so let's say that we wanted this to be a little bit smoother, right? Instead of 12 slices, we could type in a value of like 24 slices. And so we may need to rerun this so we're just going to run it here, click, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set my slicing parameters to 24. But now, if I was to twist this 35 degrees, like this, notice how you're getting more slices on your object. So your twist is going to be a lot smoother. So you can see in here um, that this is giving you a twisted object just like this. And then from here, you know, you can do some interesting things with making copies and rotating this like this, so you could just kind of repeat that in order to make something that twists multiple times. But this tool is gonna to allow you to twist objects inside of SketchUp. All right, so now let's take a look at my favorite tool inside a Fredo scale, and that's the radial bending tool. And so what the radial bending tool does is it allows you to select an object and a point, and then it allows you to bend it along a curve. So let's say, for example, that we have this ramp in here, and we want this to be kind of a curving ramp. So what we could do is we could select the object using the radial bend tool. So just click on it. And then what it does is it asks you to set an origin and a plane. So basically it's gonna start off like the rotate tool, right? So what we want it to do is we wanna tap the up arrow key and we wanna say that our bend is gonna start from this point right here. So we're just gonna click and it's gonna ask us for a reference direction. 
which in this case is just going to be this direction right here. And then it's going to ask for a target point, which is going to be the point at which um, your bending starts. So I'm going to set a point that's I'm going to set a point that's like right here. Well then, what we do is we pick a rotation angle. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to set an angle along which we want this to bend. So in this case, let's say we wanted this to bend 45 degrees. You just type in a value of negative 45 and hit the enter key. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to bend this object along that 45 degrees. And if we look at this, it's doing the same thing that we talked about before where it's coming in here and it's kind of slicing this um, based on the radius that you have in here. And so again, remember that just like the other tools that we looked at, that also has slicing parameters. So let's say we were to take this and we wanted to bend it like this. You could hit the tab key in order to set a number of slices. And for example, I'm gonna say that I want maybe like 48 slices because I want a really smooth curve. We're gonna click on okay. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna slice this more when you set this. So if I type in a value of like negative 90 and hit the enter key, what that's gonna do is that's basically gonna come in here and that's gonna slice this 48 times. So if I look at my hidden geometry, you can see I've got slices all the way along here and it's gonna take this object and it's gonna bend it along the curve of the radius that we selected based on that number of slices. So you could do that with more or less slices depending on what you wanted to do. So let's say for example that we brought our bench over and all we wanted to do on this one is just a couple slices, right? So we'll say we wanted this to be three. We'll notice what this is gonna do is this is only gonna slice this a couple times. So notice how it just sliced it in here like this. So what you could do is you could use the radial bend tool in order to set this to be more of like a segmented piece like this um, that only has like three pieces, but it's not like a smooth curve. So you could use this in order to create different kinds of geometry as well. All right, so I will link to some more Fredo scale tutorials on this page. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, if you do that, you can vote on the extension that I'm gonna cover every week. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.